let's take a look at the shift mechanism. I'm going to hold it in a vise, just because that way it's easier to take a look at. This is the shifter. Uh, let's take a look at how it how it actually shifts, how it works. Uh, this is taking a look at the shifter from the front. So this would be pushing the big lever, and this would be pushing the little lever. This will shift you to a larger cog. You'll see that pulling, uh, pushing this lever actually pu uh, would pull the cable around this way. And what you can see is that the it catches the teeth over here and when you push on the lever the pawl or um, sometimes known as pallet uh, but let's call it a pawl this time goes over here and just goes over the tooth until it catches again the fun part is to shift to a smaller cog what happens here is um, you, you push this lever, and looking farther in, what happens is that lever catches this plate. This plate uh, goes around here and pushes on this. Um, here, let's look slightly farther here. Um, and that plate lifts this pole, which is the one that was engaging to, to shift to a smaller uh, to a larger cog. Um, at the same time, it's rotating here. It's pushing this pole down and the main pole up at the same time. Notice I have a lot of grease here. You really want grease in this location and this location. Sorry, let me get this centered a bit better. So, um, this thing doesn't engage immediately, uh, so like when you're pressing the large lever, this uh, is what uh, engages the pawl. So the pawl is being pulled up right now, so it isn't actually trying to shift to a smaller cog. It just goes over that over that tooth there. To shift to a smaller cog, you press this lever. Uh, this the, uh, it goes allows this pole. It, there's a pole on this side, so this pole engages on this big plate here. Uh, the big plate. What that does is it lifts the this pole so that you don't you're not trying to shift down a gear. It pushes this pole down and it's push and it's pushing this pole up so what's happening is um, as you can see it's pushing this pole down it's going to get right behind this gear and then it's going to lift this pole up at the same time and what that's going to do is it's going to here So that main uh, cog, uh, main pawl, released, and this caught the, the next tooth. And then when it releases again, it sh allows it to, to go one over. It's like a clockwork mechanism. And so that's how this works. And here, let's look at it from, the, from this side. Go. These are actually ones that I had gotten three, um, not 3D printed, but laser cut. The original pieces are for 11 speed. This is actually a 12 speed, but the problem is that it's just slightly off. Okay, so here are the original pieces. The uh, prime, the primary um, gear ratchet and the secondary gear ratchet. 
because of the thickness of the parts that I was able to get cut for my th um, laser cut pieces to convert to 12 speed, um, I did not use this washer that was actually um, in the original set. But so these are the original uh, gear ratchet pieces, the primary gear ratchet, a washer, and the secondary gear ratchet. And as mentioned, the orientation for these parts is like this. So of course, and this is the orientation for that. And then this um, dot goes on this corner, uh, op, you know, pretty much opposite from the pointy bit. Um, that that allows, you know, that's where the um, upshift, downshift uh, ratchet will, will catch and, and the downshift ball. So this piece fits tightly in here. Um, the original actually is r relatively loose, so I didn't need to make the tolerances as tight as they were. But press the primary gear ratchet in, and then the secondary gear ratchet again. I want to have it in the proper orientation which is you know, almost this way around. And then start putting everything back together again. All right, to reassemble this, you want to get the spring into the uh, peg in the hole. And bushing is right here. Um, so. There's actually some grease on this bushing already, but you might want to actually get more on it. All right, so this side could probably use... Goes down on here like this. Tabs are there. It's in like that. And now it gets preloaded onto here. Spring goes on this hook and then rotate it just a little bit to catch on that part. One bushing there, another bushing here. So let's get some more grease on these things. Now we want to press on here and see that, yes, good, it, it still moves around easily enough. So the challenge is there's a spring holding the um, secondary uh, or, or trailing pallet, and then there's a, this spring for the primary pallet, and they both need to be engaged. So. I haven't pulled this thing out, so the spring is still holding in properly. This one needs to uh, get preloaded and pushed onto here. Normally, what I would do is actually um, have a vise and hold this stuff together. So let me try to track down a vise. I'm clamping down on the uh, um, bushings, and well, not no, I'm clamping down right next to the bushing, and now I need to preload the spring. So let's double check here. The spring, one tab goes on the side of the pallet, and now I need to preload it. Let's see if this. paper clip has enough torque. And so I'm going to bend the spring or, or preload the spring while pushing this thing in. And now we need to try to get the circlip in. The problem is that we want it preloaded like this. 
uh, when assembling these things, you'll want to, you don't need to put the circlip on. Um, and in fact, it's a real pain. Um, you will put the cir uh, circlip on after everything's assembled. And that way there's a lot less tension on here. You might have to twist this a little bit to, to get over the um, notch on the circlip uh, and for over this side and the circlip over here. The circlip is not completely in, but we will jump ahead. Put this piece in. Get some grease in there. Put the spring in. There's that hole there. Preload it. Next piece is this. Now the main thing is this pawl needs to, of course, catch somewhere. I think there's enough grease on here already. I'm not going to worry about that. The spring goes through that hole. Catches there. Gets turned around this way engages on that hole. Oop. Let's try that again. Spring and hooks on over here. Pushing. This goes over here. It's really got to go way over this side. All right. Now try to get that spring on here again. And if I hadn't lost that circlip, it would go right in there. Next piece is this plastic piece. It goes right over here like this. Pushing. Um, spring. I should have done it before the plastic pushing. Bracket nut and screw everything t together. And make sure it's not pinched in there. The nut and bolt head are almost flush. Tighten it a fair amount. It was very, very tight uh, originally. And now let's get the spring in there. Push it and make sure it's in the hole a bit better than that. All right, and now our shifter is working. If you haven't already done so, now is the point where you install these circlips. Um, there are two of them, of course, uh, at the poles, one here and one here. And if you have lost any of the circlips, um, it's not as important to have the circlip on this location. It's more important to have this circlip here just because it helps hold things together. And um, even though this bolt is holding it all together and also it keeps things nice and perpendicular. So you want to make sure that if if you have any remaining circlips, uh, put it here. Um, and these circlips are actually relatively easy to find on Amazon. They are a, a two millimeter inside diameter groove. And for the um, brake lever pivot, this is very hard to see here, a, a four millimeter diameter. These can either be known as circlips or eclips just because of the 
shape of the thing. It looks more like an E. It's important to make sure that this is greased right here and right here, just because when you're shifting, um, when you're up shifting, these those two locations are where you've got a lot of sliding forces going. And so you want to make sure that you do have grease right there and there. Um, as also, of course, along the whole uh, gear ratchet would be a fine place to have extra grease too. You don't have to have it generously greased, just in slightly greased. After you have your shift mechanism together, it's time to put it inside the shifter. Goes in here, make sure that this plate goes in like this. Everything just sort of drops into, into place. The screw that holds this, this in is the one that looks sort of like a wood screw. We'll go in like this. Um, what I'm doing is I'm backing this screw off because it's not feeling like it's, well, it's fe felt like it digs in too much, but now it's, it's feeling correct. So just screw that in. Tighten the set screw. And install the back bolt. And press the side pin in. And you see that it's preventing the, the rear bolt from falling out. Next step is to install the brake lever. Uh, main part is to get the spring into the hole. So that comes up like this. Spring goes in the hole. We'll just make sure that it's centered a bit more. And then the uh, shaft goes in. This is the side with the groove. That actually goes on towards the inside, so just press it straight on through. I don't know which side you actually should be pressing it from. It, I don't think it matters all that much, since it's not shouldered or anything like that. So the shaft is in. I'm going to press it sl more flush on this side. When you look through here you can see you just look and make sure that the uh, ledge or the groove is right in there and then install the circlip just goes in like that gets pressed in with whatever tools you have snapped in. Last step is to install the bottom covers. One cover goes on like that. The other cover goes on like this. Screw goes in. And your shifter is ready to install on your bike. And of course, uh, make sure that the shifter is in the correct position so that you can put the cable in. For my conversion to 12 speed, I did uh, two laser cut pieces right here and here. And 
and to accommodate the extra range of motion that that the 12 speed needs, I had to file down right over here. So this is something to be aware of. 